Good morning. Uh, this is the Joe Smo Show. I'm Jefferson, and I'm here joined with uh, Emilio and special guest Todd. And we've got an amazing uh, show for you guys today. Uh, it's just unbelievable the news out of the last week. Bitcoin seemed to be right around 8,300, while the market, the U.S. market, is going everywhere. You know, speaking of the U.S. market, oh, well, first, Emilio, uh, say hi. Hey, how's it going? And Todd, if you want to introduce yourself. Hi, guys. Hey, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. So it's great to be here. So, yeah, the top of the news, it's just, it's just crazy stuff going on with the U.S. market where it goes up and down. And the thing is, there's a lot of pressures on that market. Um, yes, at the moment, there might be a China trade deal in the wings, but it looks like that might fall through. Um, and uh, meanwhile, Brexit is still... Uh, on schedule for Halloween, which might make for a very spooky November. Uh, sure, it's on again, off again, on again, but there's still no official news out of England on how that's going to play out. Um, so that's why Bitcoin still remains a very safe haven. And so along the same lines, uh, while it may be a safe haven for U.S. people, though, there's a new question on the IRS tax form. Get this, they want to ask every American, every American, whether or not they have bought, sold, exchanged, traded, or done anything with cryptocurrency. And the last time they did this, by the way, uh, was like when they came for the gold and they asked every American to trade in their gold. So here's the deal though, on that form, if you say yes, you're giving the IRS ammunition to then potentially audit you. Um, if you answer no, and they find out from Coinbase or Gemini or any of the reporting exchanges that uh, you know you traded, then you've lied to the IRS, and that's even worse. Then they can do an audit for seven years. And in my own case, man, I bought, sold, traded everything else for the last well, like seven years actually. And the thing is, a lot of these exchanges. Are, are gone. I you, you could ask me now what I did. I couldn't even answer. I don't even remember how many times I bought and sold other digital currencies that have actually gone bust even. Uh, so it's going to make for a very complicated situation if they decide to audit me anyway. Uh, but how about you, Emilio? Um, have you bought, sold, or otherwise dealt with Bitcoin? Yeah, of course. Uh, I mean, like you, I, I remember trading uh, with one exchange, um, BTCE, there was Camp BX over here in the U.S. Uh, out of Georgia. Uh, there's got to be at least some other ones. I think there was like Mint Pal or something or something along those lines. I think that ended up being a scam. Uh, I mean, Mount Gox, of course. Uh, I lost a lot of money there. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I used to trade on Bitfinex. Do I have an account there still? I, I don't even know if they're allowed to... Uh, let me log in. <laughs> I don't know what happened to that. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a mess. Uh, I don't, I'm not going to be able to figure it out, but uh, hopefully maybe someone can. I just not me. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Well, Todd, how about you? Uh, have you ever bought or sold Bitcoin in the last 10 years? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think all of the above. Yeah, so I, I concur. I think that uh, so. If, if you look at, you know, with our previous company, Interbank FX, so uh, it was, it was self-reporting just like anything on your, on your taxes. If, if you, if you have short-term capital gains or, or long-term cap capital gains, you're supposed to report them. And so I, I think because you're, you're trading, you know, cryptocurrency, it doesn't give you a, a pass to, you know, report your, your income. So I, I think, you know, we're, we're planning on with CoinZoom, just like we did with our other brokerage firm, you know, there'll be you know an annual statement that will be available for customers, and they to help them, you know, if and when they need to uh, have a more detailed, you know, audit history of their trading activity. Well, I think that's great for going forward. It's just I'm looking back in the past when this thing was still developing, and the IRS had not issued any guidance on how this stuff works, or the guidance they issued was confusing to say the least. For example. Let's say, uh, as an example, you know, I got one Bitcoin uh, way, way back and I traded that for Ethereum. There's been tons of airdrops on Ethereum. Um, and let's say I lost access to that wallet, right? 
Uh, even though I technically, you know, put money into that wallet, I lost access to that wallet. So am I supposed to pay uh, capital gains tax on every one of those airdrops that I don't even have access to anymore, right? So I mean, it's going to be a very, very confusing situation, I think, for a lot of Americans. Uh, Emilio, do you, do you still have Ethereum that you lost access to? Yes, definitely. <laughs> well, you may owe taxes, right? Bitcoin. Uh, there's probably some other cryptocurrencies that I've lost access to as well. Right, right. So this is going to be, I, I know, I actually know of some people uh, that have bought Bitcoin, um, like this is back in 2014, I believe, late 2014, they bought Bitcoin and they had put it in a safety deposit box and they said they're going to lock it away for 10 years and they have promptly forgot about it. And so that's going to be an interesting tax situation because uh, the, the forks, right? There's Bitcoin gold, Bitcoin, I don't know, platinum, Bitcoin, whatever. And all of those forks represent a potential capital gains, right? Well, I think it, it'll be, you know, it'll have to be self-reporting because there's no, there's no possible way to do for them to do an investigative audit of you know your wallet and go through all the different chains and so i think if and when there's clarity uh i think that's when they'll draw a line in the sand that, that we need to yeah i really hope that there could be a lot more guidance from the irs before they really start trying to do things like audits and so forth so yeah. there, there has to be a lot more clear definition about all these different cases. And I think the worst thing for the IRS to do would actually be to start doing audits right now and dragging people into tax court and trying to set precedents because those precedents may end up hurting the IRS in the long run. So those are just my thoughts. Um, but meanwhile, another news, um, as, far, as far as legal standards, if you will, when you're playing a game of Scrabble or you're playing Wheel of Fortune, uh, Satoshi is now a real word. According to the Oxford English Dictionary, it is now a real word. So uh, what do you think, Todd, about the word Satoshi? Do you, is that now great to be part of the American lexicon? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, there's there's different, um, you know, it's like millennial or any other, you know, generational, uh, you know, Defining moment, and I, I think I think Satoshi, you know, do that word is a defining moment for for this generation. Right, right. Well, are there any other words, Todd, that you think should be added to the Oxford English Dictionary? I mean, I can think of a. Do we now got Ethereum and that smallest unit? You know, we've got. Uh, oh gosh, how many cryptocurrencies are out there? More than a thousand, and they all have different units of measure, right? So uh, where, where do you think uh, Oxford should draw the line for what should be a real word? Well, I think, I think uh, you know, it's not only, you know, you know represents, you know, the, the founder of Bitcoin, but it's also the founder of, of digital assets and, and, this, and this movement. So I think it has a little, you know, more significant meaning than, say, Ethereum or Ripple. So I'm sure, you know, as we as we evolve in this space, that the dictionary is going to expand as well. Yeah, I think so, too. So actually, in my mind, I really think Satoshi should represent the smallest unit of any cryptocurrency. I really think that's how it should be in the long run. You know, so if dealing with the smallest unit of Ethereum, that should be, you know, one Satoshi of Ethereum, for example. I really yeah. think that's how it ought to be. That's just my two cents. But. Yeah, it's interesting that they're finally moving ahead with that. And then along with that, Coinbase, Gemini, and some of these other folks, uh, exchanges have all uh, been coming together and saying, uh, I don't know if they're uh, working together, but it's odd that they all do it at about the same time. They're jacking up the fees to uh, now half, like 0.5% of every trade, which is significant, by the way, if you're trying to be a day trader. I mean, that could be all your profits in a day. Uh, if you're trying to do day trading. So uh, I, I think it's just absolutely atrocious. That, that It's like all at the same time they all do. It's like gas stations, right? You're driving around gas stations and you, you know, this gas station is, you know, in the morning it's like 199 and across the street it's uh, 209. I'm in Texas, by the way, we have cheap gas. 
Um, but and in the afternoon, they're all 199. It's like they all get together and they all set the rates the same. So what, what do you think about this uh, exchange rate fiasco, Todd? Well, I think, uh, you know, so we saw this in the in the FX business with uh, with there's, a you know, a lot of gimmicks that we saw with, you know, uh, people were saying, you know, no, no commissions, but but big spreads. So I, I have to laugh at, you know, say a circle, they say commission free trading, but they uh-huh. charge it. But they charge a three percent spread. So a three percent spread on BTC right now is two hundred and forty dollars. Right. <laughs> so that's so that's a that's that's really a three percent commission because you know our prices on BTC are are, are either choice or or the spread is one or two dollars. Um, and so I think there'll be some education where uh, the community as this evolves. There'll be, you know, comparisons with with the true cost of trading. So they they can say, well, it's, geez, I don't have to pay any commissions when I trade on on Circle or some of these other exchanges. But in reality, you're paying a three percent commission because you're you're paying a three percent spread. Um, and we've taken a different approach where uh, we've tried to make this really simple for customers to one on board you know, to fund their account with their Visa or MasterCard or Wire or ACH. And then we think that, you know, competitive uh, competitive pricing for, you know, API and regular uh, traders is important because we, we want the, um, we want all traders, but we also would like, you know, day traders. We, re- we, we really lived on day traders in our last company where customers would be in trades for, you know, sometimes, you know, five or 10 seconds during the non-farm payroll announcement. And so we'd like to have really competitive spreads uh, and and uh, low commissions so customers can, you know, take advantage of these three to 5% moves every day. Very, very cool. Well, uh, just to give our listeners uh, and viewers a brief background on uh, Todd, Todd Crossland, by the way, uh, founded uh, Interbank. Um, and uh, has actually, he also found it where I most recognize Todd Crossland is from Seed Equity Ventures, by the way. Uh, he won the Ernst & Young's Entrepreneur of the Year uh, for his foreign exchange trading experience, uh, over a trillion in trading value there. Um, so Todd has really got a, a great background, not just in uh, financial trading and things like that, but also uh, dealing with startups and things like that. So. His advice is going to be definitely greatly valued. So I would say if Todd said something, we should definitely listen uh, to what he has to say, right? So, so Todd, why don't you tell us a little bit more about what you got going, um, what's happened? It just sounds amazing. Sure. So, so, so CoinZoom, uh, we're a U.S. regulated uh, cryptocurrency exchange. And we also are, are regulated in Australia. We have a digital currency exchange license. And so CoinZoom, we're a, we're a registered money services business in all 50 states and territories. And then we're a registered um, money transmitter available for trading in about 46 states. We just got our license in Texas um, last week. So we're excited about uh, bringing on a big swath of uh, uh, crypto traders in Texas as well, and so w- what we've done with uh, with with CoinZoom is we we brought back some of the, the the best talent that we had at our former brokerage firm Interbank and built a very fast matching engine. So we have a desktop trading platform, we have an iOS app, um, and a Android app, and we we've created a, a nice you know we've looked at all the different pain points that we see. In, in the cryptocurrency space, one is onboarding. Sometimes it takes, you know, a day, an hour, three days, three weeks to open an account with somebody. So our onboarding process for KYC and AML, uh, it, it takes as low as about 10 seconds once you click the button wow. to to uh, submit your information. And we scan against uh, 250 government watch lists, the OFAC list, and then we get the approval back really quick. And so we, we've done this with you know, thousands and thousands of customers with our, our previous um, business interbank. And so um, we have a really good uh, technology for, for onboarding customers. And then 
another pain point that we saw was the fiat gateway. There's a lot of exchanges that don't have a very good fiat gateway or none at all. And so uh, through our banking partnerships, we're able to uh, let customers onboard with Visa or debit card, uh, a Visa debit card or a MasterCard debit card, um, ACH for U.S. customers, uh, wires. Obviously, they're you know they can deposit crypto. And as we look at you know you talked about fees, um, uh, our 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 fees. We think when you use your you know Visa or Mastercard to fund your account, we think we're that we're the lowest in the world as far as fees. You know some some brokerages charge uh, between four and ten percent to um, fund oh. your account. And and so ours is two point nine nine percent. So we we made it really competitive to fund your account with the debit card. And then once you you know you fund your account and you own Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ripple, Neo, Raven, whatever coin you're you've got in your we we're issuing customers um, a CoinZoom Visa card. So when you open your, your account, you know the steps will be you, you get approval, uh, your account's approved. And then, then after you fund your account, you'll be issued for free a virtual CoinZoom debit card. And so automatically you get the CoinZoom debit card. And so this debit card is attached to your, your wallet. Um, and then in the wallet, you can have your, you know, there's a fiat wallet, a BTC wallet, Ether, Ripple, whatever. Then you can prioritize um, on our app which, which coins that you want to spend. Uh, on your virtual debit card. Um, and so we really think that we have the premier fiat gateway for both onboarding, you know, fiat to the exchange, then off offloading uh, fiat into your account. And then then something else that we have is is called Zoomi, which is similar to Venmo, uh, except it has a few more features than Venmo. So um, with our with our platform and app, um, I can send you uh, both fiat and crypto instantly for free. And it's cool. uh, it's cross border and it's uh, so you can do it globally. So you've got family in Germany or Brazil, uh, as long as they have our app, you can send them, you know, $100. It hits their account instantly and then they, they can spend it on their on their CoinZoom uh, debit card. And so any any merchant in the world that accepts Visa, you can use um, you can use the Zoomi functionality or you can access access your, your wallet. And then you can also go to any ATM in the world that accepts Visa and get money out that way as well. Well, on this show, you're actually dealing with a lot of folks that uh, have actually ATMs as well. And I know one of the things that has always been a little interesting uh, or a little difficult is the concept of you know being able to access your uh, bitcoins at any one of these ATMs. So uh, there, certainly there could be something interesting there where perhaps these people uh, can work together with CoinZoom in some way uh, to have you know CoinZoom enabled on all these ATMs uh, around the world. So that might be something interesting. Yeah, that'd be great. So uh, I know on one of the previous shows, we talked with uh, Sheldon. Uh, he was actually working with Visa as well uh, to be able to use a Visa debit card at his ATM to uh, be able to buy uh, crypto. So you would just swipe your, your debit card and then you could instantly purchase uh, Bitcoin. So there's definitely a lot of interest between uh, things like Visa working together with uh, companies uh, to enable the buying and selling of, of crypto. Yeah, I think I think Visa, so uh, so people talk about what, what does mass adoption look like in the cryptocurrency space? And we think mass adoption starts to look like if, if, if there's really simplicity, ease of buying uh, cryptocurrencies, so you can use your, your your Visa card, your your um, Mastercard, or, or other or, or other real easy forms to to purchase it, and then if there's an easy way to spend it, you know, so it's gonna be hard to go to Starbucks and and give them, you know, you got your, you know, you got Ethereum uh, on in your in your uh, 
uh, mobile wallet and you know they're not going to take ethereum but with what with our authorization engine you're really giving them the ethereum but you're but they're getting in the visa rails and as you know starbucks they're getting 20 bucks and uh but it's it's coming out of your your ether wallet so we think that this is a first step in kind of mass adoption and people being able to freely use their their cryptocurrencies you know globally yeah, I, I agree. I know that's one of the been one of the barriers is uh, you know you go into like you say a Starbucks or McDonald's and you're like you know can can you take my uh, 0.01 Ethereum uh, or, or how do I say this uh, 100 Satoshis of Ethereum uh, they're gonna laugh at you. Um, but on the other hand, like you say, you know if you got a Visa card, you know it's everywhere you want to be, right? It's so right. along the, along the same lines, uh, there's a couple of concepts there I definitely would love to explore with you. So. Top of the list is the fees for using your exchange uh, along the same lines. If you go to Coinbase, you go to some of these other guys, they, 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 you look, I mean, they, their sell rate is so atrocious. You're paying, uh, you know, like you say, five, six, seven, eight, ten percent uh, for them to automatically convert. But what about your your sell rate? What does it look like? So, so to convert on the visa? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, it's so so we have we have fees with our, our 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 banking partners and also with our our processors and they they account to about 50 cents per transaction. So our our okay. our, our, our fee is going to be just a flat fee of 50 cents whether whether it's you know if if the average uh, debit card uh, swipe is $75 it's 50 cents if they do a thousand dollars it's 50 cents if they do ten thousand dollars it's 50 cents so, so wait wait let me get this straight so I, my favorite story I love to tell about well it was with American Express uh, but one of my uh, good friends is Von Propiel right flip is showtime rotisserie oven uh, salesman of the century he wrote that book uh, so he walks into Ford and he buys three brand new uh, Ford ex uh, Expeditions, I think, uh, massive vehicles for his family, right? They're, they're like the size of living rooms. And uh, seriously, you get inside, it's like a living room, a mobile living room with TVs and everything. It was amazing. And he bought three brand new ones on his American Express for $100,000. All right, so you're telling me I could walk in with one of your visas and I, let's say I had $100,000 loaded on it. I could swipe it and you would only take 50 cents for that transaction. Correct. Wow. Yeah, that's amazing. And, the, and there's other cards out there that there's kind of some different varieties out there, but they, you know, I think the lowest that we've seen is they charge 2.5 percent um, on 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 using that card. So our, ours is 50 cents. That's amazing. That's incredible. I'm just curious. Can you do that for the merchant side too? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, we don't. I mean, there's a big food chain in in this whole Visa network, and that's why this is such a a large, profitable, successful business, you know. And what they do with merchants. So uh, we wish we could help out the merchants, but you know, we're just trying to help out our customers right now. So yeah, no, I I hear you there. I mean, I I know some folks. You know, they're doing a million a month, and it's just uh, they're always complaining about how much they have to spend to accept that million. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, along the same lines, I mean, you got the other side of that equation, and I, I really think it, you know, you talk about merchants, it's also the uh, employee side. You know, if you're working, uh, you want to be able to earn in crypto, and right now it's not so easy to tell your employer, hey, uh, don't pay me in this worthless currency, pay me in Bitcoin. So, any thoughts on that? I know it's not your space, but... Yeah, I mean, we could, we, you know, employers, we, we could kind of issue employers and employee, you know, and their employees, you know, debit cards, and, and they could really pay their employees and say Ether, you know, BTC, the employees could just use their debit card like they would their, their regular debit card, you know, for, for expenses. You know, you can set up bill pay on this card, you, you know, pay college tuition, you know, whatever, whatever. So we think that this is a nice option to, to to banking and then you know with you know so we'll be offering staking services starting with uh uh algo you know algorand and dash and 
and so you you know you can have passive income just on just based on you know owning dash or algo you know on the exchange so it's almost like a, a savings account awesome very awesome i know a lot of people are currently unbanked in fact i got a uh just at my house here you know there's a couple of handymen um that help you know putting up the shower heads and whatnot uh, and you know they, they were unbanked uh, just because of a random screw up at the bank and everything else he, he lost access to his bank account and uh, he was saying how hard it was uh, to just buy and sell, uh, or I should say, you know, to withdraw or deposit, you know, money. I couldn't pay him anything other than cash. Yeah. Uh, so it'd be great to uh, hand him a, a, even a Visa card. I don't know if there's any way you could do like a prepaid Visa card type of thing. I'd love to buy a whole bunch of those uh, where he had all of a sudden had access to crypto too. Well, I mean, really, if he, he uh, you know, all, all he needs to do is pass the KYC AML. So he has to have a uh, right, right. You know, either a social security number or a government issued ID that he can get. He can get a Visa card with us. All right. Well, maybe that's something to look into. It's like a gift, a way to do, a way to mail the gift card ahead of time, but still yeah. required registration. If you did that, I'll probably order a hundred of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Great. Because uh, I'm meeting people all the time where it's like I want to pay them, but I don't want to pay them in cash. I really don't. Um, so I'd love to hand him a card. So, Great. all right. Me meanwhile, um, but yeah, I think there's a, a huge opportunity here. Like I said, with employers, um, all the time I know they're trying to find ways of helping their unbanked too. So, uh, sounds like a great solution. Well, tell me more about the exchange. I know you mentioned uh, you had a deep liquidity and all that. Could you tell me more about how that liquidity works? Sure. So, so. You know, similar to our our uh, our last broker term. So before we were we were uh, our counterparties were Citibank, you know, Deutsche Bank, wow. UBS, uh, J.P. Morgan, Goldman, and so we had liquidity from all of the major banks for our, our FX trading. And so what we've done um, with our exchange in our matching engine is, you know, we, we can either be a fixed API or, or rest API. We're connecting to, you know, global liquidity uh, and some of the biggest market makers uh, in the world. And so we're able to aggregate kind of the best bid and best offer from uh, lots of uh, professional, uh, you know, even regulated, you know, um, market makers uh, around the world to give really deep liquidity. So type pricing on BTC, uh, you know, maybe there's, you know, a thousand BTC available on the offer uh, and the and the spreads are, you know, one to two dollars or, or sometimes choice during the day, uh, choice spreads. So we think that liquidity is going to be a nice feature that yeah, especially, you know, API traders or, you know, high volume traders are really going to enjoy. And, and then really li liquidity and your spreads this is such a big factor in your commissions uh, because so it, like we said earlier, if someone says, well, commission free trading, but they charge a 3% spread. So that's really a $240. That's really a 3% commission, uh, it, especially if our spreads are, you know, a dollar or choice on, on BTC. So we, we think we want to really educate the, um, um, the, the crypto space on, you know, on what a quality trade is. Uh, something that we did at, at Interbank, we, we had a big campaign uh, the last couple of years, and it was called Your Trade Matters. And so we, we issued um, re, like a report card on our exchange every week that said, you know, the average execution time was, you know, 0.3 milliseconds. Uh, the price improvement was X. Um, you know, so we had all these metrics, the average spread, you know, the average commission, so we're going to try and do something similar to your trade matters for our exchange and, and really try to be transparent, transparent um, with with what the two, two true cost of trading is. That's, that's amazing. Now, you mentioned, you know, some of these market makers and whatnot. And so, I mean, I know every uh, Bitcoin hodler out there, I, I'm not that focused on the price, honestly. I'm looking at it from the long run, you know. Because uh, I look at Hong Kong, I look at Venezuela, and I'm like, it's a matter of time, you know, yeah. for the rest. But you mentioned these market makers, and I've always been wondering, and I'm sure a lot of people are too, 
what what are re they really thinking about the long term viability of fiat? Well, I think I think the more so the people that we're dealing with are it's a very sophisticated, well financed group, and 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 the group of institutional market makers are putting millions of dollars into infrastructure, uh, and and they they're typically trading. They're they're coming, you know, a lot of Chicago firms. They're coming from high frequency trading and either equities or options or, or you know, a lot of them are coming from FX. And so, you know, I think we're just seeing this as a as another asset class uh, emerge that that's a non correlated asset class to to fiat or or even equities. And so, th this is something that I, I think kind of the, the the world is you know and and institutions are waking up that they want to have a uh, a portion of their portfolios into into this asset class and you know it, so, you know sometimes you know if if the if the u s market is 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 going straight up you know one two percent a day, it's kind of like risk on risk off uh, i I see in the market you know correlated back to our fx business so you know this could be this could be a counterintuitive all right cool so yeah so it should be interesting i think what what will happen in the long run i mean it does I, i'm always fascinated by uh just how this emerging market has been taking everybody by storm um it's been one of those unexpected things and now all of a sudden we're at eight thousand and i think people are starting re to realize that there are some real use cases uh, for Bitcoin. Um, you know, look at Hong Kong. A lot of people there are finding that it's a lot more useful. Uh, Venezuela, certainly, they're finding it's a lot more useful. So I think this is something that uh, the technology improves. People like Todd here are going to make a huge difference on uh, how it's perceived, how it's used, and things like that. So those are my final thoughts. Uh, Emilio, any, any final thoughts? Yeah, so uh, you mentioned uh, the commission free, uh, but the spread being like three percent or something. It, you're you're kind of gearing towards Robinhood and, and those types of of trading platforms that are dumbing it down. No, no. So we'll um, so we want to draw that comparison. You know, uh, so our our commissions will be uh, starting at you know you know point two percent or 0.26% depending on a few um, But you were, you were talking about kind of creating an incentives for a uh, higher volume of, of trading and for different tiers and, and that, in that aspect. So, yeah, so, so we have, uh, you know, with the VIP rewards level, we have uh, really there's uh, four different levels for VIP rewards, you know, preferred, a gold member, platinum or black if you get black status you can get 50 percent discount in trading commission uh, so we think that our our trading commissions as we start will be very competitive with the you know as low as 0.2 for 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 maker uh fees but then that can drop you know upwards of 50 percent depending on what vip level that you're in got it oh that's cool and, and uh, you're you're banking on the the smart the smart trader the sophisticated trader, or yeah, you're so to get everyone. We, we would, we, yeah, so we would like everybody, but we think that you know with our with our other a, our API trading, and you know really tight tight spreads and and deep liquidity, we're going to attract you know institutions and and you know um, high frequency traders as well. Cool, very nice. So, what are your final thoughts, Emilio? Um, I, I'm kind of looking forward to, uh, to kind of the smart consumer and the, the different trading fees for, uh, I mean, it's just capitalism. It, when, when fees grow higher, people move around and they, they try different options. I know Gemini's fees are incredibly high, uh, Coinbase and, and GDAX, uh, you know, they used to be, well, Coinbase was never really low, but GDAX was, was pretty low, um, by by my standards, and now I guess they're raising it, so uh, I'm gonna explore other options. So that's what I that's what I feel. All right, final final thoughts, Todd, on crypto or life or yeah, we're, yeah, we're, we're excited. I mean, so if you if you look at um, you know, so there you know, it seems like the world's in commotion, 
and and you know in in the past you know when either the you know say the subprime mortgage crisis or uh, a threat of you know some skirmish in the Middle East or something there's always been a flight to you know out of out of equities into government bonds U.S. particularly U.S. Treasuries and so we kind of see a a future where uh, you know a, a safe haven um, investment uh, you know, in, instead of U.S. Treasuries, and maybe that's part of the equation, but we think that, you know, more and more people are going to look uh, as a, uh, a, you know, cryptocurrencies and particularly Bitcoin as a potential hedge against some of these, you know, world activities that you guys have talked about with you know, Venezuela or Hong Kong or different things. So we think that um, we think that there's a bright future and we know that there's, there's tons of investment being done right now with institutions around the world that are to participate. And, and so we think that's a good sign to, you know, to be here and, you know, and, and to launch the exchange and offer these products and services that we're doing. Yeah, one thing I'm looking at is we're really moving towards this global economy um, where any kind of a barrier to that economy is just, it's slowing things down, it's driving people nuts and that sort of thing. So. Yeah. Uh, things like Bitcoin and Ethereum uh, enable new markets and new opportunities. Um, particularly Ethereum being a programmatic cryptocurrency, you can do things with it. Um, and if you add to that, you look at the way Fiat is, you know, kind of fumbling along. You know, things like the 80 billion a month that the Feds are injecting. You know, you got uh, a lot of risk and concerns uh, by these. Uh, you know, bank, you know, you know, when you try to wire, you know, even $10,000 to another country, you know, they throw up all kinds of red flags and take days. And, and here you're just like, well, I'm trying to hire a call center so they can answer the damn phone for my million a month opportunity, you know? Yeah. So this is where these new uh, technologies are really going to make the difference. So I am excited to be in this market and I would encourage you to join us as well. So I'm Jeff. Um, Emilio and Todd were here with me. Say hi, say bye. Hey, thank you. Thanks for having me. All right, thanks. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Take care. Bye-bye.